do now is all of today is gonna it's gonna be very important that we play with our passive stance. When people are that close and they're able to touch us, if I just keep my hands down, I'm gonna get victimized. I have to define my space. I wanna almost be touching or sometimes allowing I'm not usually initiating touch, but if someone's pushing and grabbing and I can establish some contact, some connection, some bridge, I have more more perception. If I rely on uh, just visual speed, it's usually going to be too slow. Tactile sensitivity, touching, feeling is always going to be much faster. Now, when we project how we put our hands up, it's a world of difference. You'll see a lot of people struggle with assertiveness, and they put their hands up and they're kind of like that. And they don't realize it. The hands are muscularly closed in. Uh, it's, a, it's a, again, a lack of assertiveness. It's a lifetime usually of, of reinforcement, and to some level there's a genetic predisposition. So I need to train myself to have my hands open. I do not want to be tense and frightened, and I do not want to be inward curling. So what I'm looking for is hands that are functional, they're moving, they're dynamic, I can use them. It's what we term the casual blur. I can talk, I'm not accusational, they're just natural, I'm moving, very, very comfortable. Generally, they're going to be engaged, they're going to be open in the majority state, and I'm going to try to avoid making them tense. So I'm not looking to lock up the wrist, and I'm not looking to try to stop. They're more like very, very subtle ramps or a funnel bringing the person's attention into you. This can be perceived as too confrontational sometimes or sometimes too submissive, too frightened, too passive. And when I'm inward, this can also be perceived as being sort of too um, introverted, too cowardly, people go in. Neuromechanically, if we look at just the muscularity and the structure of it, if I'm very tense like that, my response time is slower and quite limited. If I'm inward turning, I'll tend to move into myself. But if I'm somewhere in between, that's where I have the chance to hit. I, ha I have the ability to ramp. Everything's starting off in that sort of natural, flared, what they often term a live hand. So what we're going to play with now is we're going to do this in a little micro plank. When I put my hand down on the floor, I want to make sure it's not super tense. Oftentimes, people that are hypertensive, when they put their hand down, they almost teeter on the inside of their hand. Their fingers are barely making any engagement. You see them doing push-ups and the fingers are fluttering. I want to have a little suction cup that will, it'll vary a bit, but I have a little bit of space underneath. It's primarily my palm heel, the fat of my hand that's making the seal, and then my finger pads. And that's it. That's what I want to have. And from that position, I'm going to try to think of my shoulders from the front, if you imagine, as being as kind of round and natural as they can be. I'm going to keep my, my legs in a kind of elastic Spider-Man position. And the first and most important thing is that I start tailbone under. My core is engaged. I see that my ribs are in and also that my scapula are kind of rounded. I don't want to have my shoulder blades squeezing together, and I certainly don't want to have asymmetries where my shoulder blades are jutting out. You see in, in Qigong they do what's called standing meditation, where they stand like that. And it's almost like you're holding a, a sort of fitness ball in your arms. Everything's very natural. It's almost the same level. Right? If you think of like Tai Chi, whoop, coming down. It should be inflated, natural, strong. So these are like suction cups, and I want to see there's an elasticity here. We're going to work till exhaustion. I want to play with bringing my elbows down where there's a lot more muscular strain and then come back to a buoyant floating state. And I can loosen it and I get my breath. I'm going to come down to a point of strain, elbows and knees almost touching, and then come back up. At any point you can release it, but I want to just keep reinforcing exertion where somebody's too close excessive elongation, and then find that buoyant center in between. And when I finally return to a standing position, I want to be neither too close, too flinched out, and too far. I want to be nice and in between. So we're going to do this for a little bit to reinforce it. There's no shortcut. I want you to feel it for two, three minutes.